Hi there, welcome back. Before you start working on any project, you always want to make sure the project is set up properly to meet your needs. After the project is loaded in DaVinci Resolve, you click the gear button at the bottom right of the page navigation bar to open the project settings window. There are many groups of settings we can adjust in the project settings window, but we will focus on just a few sections to get started. The first one is the timeline format in the master settings page. In this section, you can choose your resolution from a drop-down menu. Even though DaVinci Resolve is resolution independent, it will recalculate the process data when output at different resolutions. It's always best to set the project at the resolution it's intended for. If you don't see the resolution from the drop-down list, you can manually enter your resolution in the frame size fields. From the drop-down list of timeline frame rate setting, you can choose the right frame rate for your project. For example, I use 30 FPS for all my videos in this channel. Please note that when you first import a video to the media pool, you may be prompted if the video frame rate is different from this one in the project settings. Usually I don't change and keep my project setting, since I might use videos of any frame rate. And once you have a timeline created in the project, you can no longer change this setting. The next section is the working folders. These fields control which folders DaVinci Resolve will use for storing cache, proxy and gallery files. So you want to make sure that you use the fastest disk in your system with lots of space available. The disk speed has a great impact on the performance of DaVinci Resolve and the temporary cache files can become very big and consume a large amount of storage. For example, I have a dedicated solid-state drive for this purpose. Within less than two months, the size of the cache files accumulated to 600 gigabytes. Now it's time to do a cleanup before it runs out of space. We can free up the space by simply deleting the no longer used folders. The next setting you may want to change is the input scaling in the image scaling group. This parameter controls how clips are handled if they don't match the timeline resolution. The default setting is scale entire image to fit, which scales up or down the image proportionally to fit the entire image into the frame. This works great in many cases, but if you are working with a project that uses lots of small image overlays, you may find this mode is a bit annoying. For example, if I want to put this logo on top of a video, I will have to change the size. If I change the scaling to crop in the inspector for this clip, it works, but somehow the on-screen control doesn't seem to be in sync with the image size. So in this scenario, I would choose the first option, center crop with no resizing. The icon now appears at its original size, and the on-screen control also matches the image size. Once you are done with your change, click Save button to apply the change and close the project settings. Or holding the Alt key while clicking the Save button, which will apply the changes and keep the window open, so that you can continue making further changes. In this Presets panel, you can save customized project settings as presets for future use. For example, select the current project, right-click, and choose Save As, give it a name, and press OK. Now you see a new preset created in the list. Next time after a new project is created, open Project Settings, in the Presets page, select the 4K config, click the Load button, or right-click the, the 4K config, choose Load. The 4K settings are now applied to the current project. If your projects will always be in 4K resolution, you can set the 4K settings as default config so that projects created in the future will take the 4K config by default. Right-click the 4K config, select Save as User Default Config. Please note when you set a config as default, the settings are actually saved to the preset called Guest Default Config, which is used by new projects as default settings. Even in the list it is still showing as 1080p, but if you select the config and go to the master settings page, 
you see that the parameter has already changed to 4K. To avoid confusion, you make a change in the page, reopen the preset panel, click the Save button. Now you see the resolution displayed correctly. There are two more settings you should always enable for DaVinci Resolve, which are the Auto Save and Auto Backup options. Open the Preference window, go to the User Preference page, open the Project Save and Load panel, and make sure both the Live Save and Project Backups options are checked. You can leave the Backup Schedule settings as is, which works for me. In case of a project crash, these backups will save you lots of trouble and time. With the Live Save on, you no longer worry about losing your work, the save happens almost instantly. For example, as we made some changes in the timeline, the word edited appears after the project name at the top, in about a second, it's gone, because the live save automatically saves the changes for you. Alright, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.